What's up everybody, I am Jesse, or as you all may know me as Game Over Jesse, here with my two co-hosts, Daniel and Ilya, but today Hello. we have a very special guest uh, for an interview. You all may know her as Zelda in Breath of the Wild, but uh, you're also very well known for a lot of other games and a lot of other roles that you've played as, not just Zelda, it's just... The people that are subscribed to my channel are uh, primarily going to know you from Zelda. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about you before we get started. Sure. Uh, so hi guys. Uh, my name is Patricia. I am a, an actor and voice actor. And as Jesse said, uh, I'm also the voice of Princess Zelda in Breath of the Wild. Um, I suppose some of the other games that I've, that I've done, a lot have been with Ubisoft. So I'm in games like For Honor and uh, Far Cry, the Assassin's Creed series, and Ash and Rainbow Six. Um, and aside from that, I do TV film and theater as well. And I also uh, record music, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm recording an album, which is my, my mic is over in another place. Uh, but as, aside from that, I live in, kind of split my time between Canada and the US. And um, yeah, I'm just a, uh, a working artist who likes to travel and eat good food and meet people. Nice. <laughs> and I'm happy to be on your podcast today. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, we've been wanting you to come on for a while, so it's it's nice to finally have you on. And I'm sure, uh, as you mentioned before we started, you'll probably answer the same questions that you've likely answered a thousand times before. Totally so cool. apologize for that. But uh, maybe there are some people watching that haven't watched the previous interviews, so... Who knows? Uh, so with uh, everyone that's watching probably knows you from your role in Zelda. So would you like to talk a little bit about how you uh, first got into that role or auditioned, how that went? Sure. So um, the audition process was, it came at a really interesting time for me because I had made a big career move to LA um, just for, for industry purposes. And I had submitted my stuff to casting directors. And this particular casting director, I found through my sister, who was a musician there for many years and had worked with him briefly. And so she gave me a name of a bunch of casting directors that she thought I should submit my packages to. And by this point, I'd already been doing a lot of work in Canada um, with Ubisoft and stuff. So I had a, I had a nice little um, package of AAA games that I, that I could call from. Um, so I, I submitted my stuff and it led to an audition for something that I that was secret um, but I had a feeling that it, it looked like a pretty cool game and it definitely felt like it had medieval it had like a princess you know king theme um, because I was auditioning for a princess and a bunch of other what seemed like magical characters but I, I would not have been able to fathom what it was of course uh, but anyway I so I got a an in-face audition and that led to an in-face callback uh, a few weeks later and they directed me around a bit. I still was sort of auditioning for a few roles. And then uh, I guess what, a while later, it's like a big waiting game, those things always, maybe a month or something like that. After that, I found out that I'd actually gotten a role and still didn't know what it was, but I was so pumped because I was like, yes, I made a great impression. This is fantastic. You know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll just, just go in there and do a great job for these people because it's the first time you'll be working for them. And then of course I get into the room and I find out they're like, do you know what it is? I'm like, no. And they're like, well, it's Princess Zelda. And I was like, what? And it just <laughs> flipped my reality a little bit um, in that moment. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it was quite the journey. And then from that point, um, yeah, I guess uh, it was a lot of a lot of it was a waiting game during the actual recording process, and uh, so because we we did the recording sort of in chunks every few months as the game was being developed, and uh, yeah, and I just kind of had to wait and like see what was next and see if I was still on board and see you know if they liked what I was doing. I just didn't know, and of course they're very secretive to begin with, and the whole thing was very secret, so. It was it was it was a very interesting mysterious year. <laughs> yeah. so, so, how was uh, your reaction when you first learned that it was Zelda that you were playing as, which has had voice acting and like the old cartoons and the CDI games and stuff, but never really had like from Nintendo full voice acting in the game, and you were being the first person that a lot of people are going to be seeing as Zelda. So, how did that feel for you? Was it like a lot more weight on your shoulder compared to other games or 
Yeah, I, this is a question that I that I do get sometimes, and, it, and it's a great question because it um, in those moments where you where you land apart, um, you have an adrenaline rush that's so huge, <laughs> you like don't know what to do with. I often say like, yeah, it almost, like I almost peed my pants. Like you just like your whole body kind of melts for a moment. You're like, what? Like this can't, you know, it, it changes your um, perception. Uh, but at the same time, yes, the pressure was very big because I knew that. I didn't know how successful the game was going to be, and you never do know until a game reaches those numbers. Obviously, there's so many things that can happen to very ambitious games, uh, especially when they're being innovative and they're trying a new console and you know all these things. Um, so there, yeah, there was a lot of like a lot of nerves around it, and I I am glad that I'd been doing this for a while. I'd been voice acting for ten years before this role came along. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? I guess um, I, I did feel the pressure and you do need to get down to just doing the work at some point, uh, which is what I do. I rely on the script and the story and the people in the room had a very tight direction as well. So that was quite helpful. Mm -hmm. Hi. But yeah. Um, <laughs> so before I let Daniel or Ilya uh, ask whatever they want to ask, I have two more things which I'll ask at the same time. One. What was your reaction when, at the Game Awards, Breath of the Wild won like several different awards, uh, which Mario and a bunch of other games were also nominated, but Zelda came out on top, and not just for the Game Awards, which are the biggest ones, but like the DICE Awards and a bunch of other big awards all, for the most part, looked at Zelda as like the game of the year. Um, so for you to have like one of the starring roles and a game that won Game of the Year. Was that something different from what you've had in the past? And the second was, uh, aside, like, if you go to the past, so before Breath of the Wild, what were some of the highlights of your career that you would say? Mm. So those oh. two questions, and then Daniel and Ilya can take over. Okay, cool. I might ask you to ask me that second question after answering the first one, but I'll All try right. to keep it brief. <laughs> Um, in terms of the Game Awards, that night was extraordinarily exciting for a few reasons. Uh, for one, I was in the audience of the Game Awards and that was very fun to be part of the, the sort of experience in the room. Um, the second thing was they announced the DLC that we'd been working on. We didn't know what the date of the DLC release was going to be either. So they were like, it's available right now. And we're like, ah, you know, <laughs> that was kind of wild too. And I, I guess at that point I hadn't realized I wasn't aware of the numbers of how many game awards had actually, I think it's won something like, I don't know, uh, close to 200 game awards around the world now, Breath of the Wild has. It's some extraordinary number. Um, but that to me was the, the epitome because it is LA. That, that, was, the, that was the best game award, <laughs> I guess, for me. It was yeah. so exciting. I don't know how to say it. It was so exciting to be there and, and to experience it that night. Yeah, yeah it was, it was a, a crazy night because not only were they uh, giving, you know, the award to Zelda, but as you said, they also announced the DLC, which I guess, uh, sorry to Daniel and Ilya, but this brings up another oh. question with the, the DLC. Uh, did you know that, like, did they call you back in to record DLC, or was that recorded around the same time as the previous audio was recorded for the game? It was a separate, a separate time. Okay. Um, it was, yeah, after the game was released. And then we sort of waited because we heard maybe there'd be a DLC, but we didn't know. And then when you get the call, you're like, okay, we'll be recording this. So uh, yeah, separate session, not too long before the actual um, uh, announcement of the DLC really, when it comes down to it. Those the turnaround times for games are becoming very quick now because a lot of the things don't need to be sort of physically printed. They just get inserted electronically into uh, the files. So um, yeah, the pressure to, to churn things out quickly is, is really interestingly big right now, I've noticed for a lot of companies. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> were you going to add anything to that? I didn't mean to interrupt. I think um, one of the other things that the Game Awards does, and every time I'm in a room, uh, there there is also a very big emphasis about the fact that it is not on, it's not on me. Like I am the name of the title character and I've done a dubbing part within this huge game that thousands and thousands of people have worked on this franchise and on the game. Like it's it's a it's a collective celebration whenever a game wins, and it's it's humbling too, if if uh, if that makes any sense, because you realize the scope when people go up and they talk about 
the people who painted the trees and who spent ages figuring out just the map and, and coding how to get you know from one place to another. All those things are just as important as this cake on the top. So I'm pretty lucky that I get to you know, travel for this reason because I did this quite small part in this very big game. <laughs> just wanted to throw that in. That was a, another thing. Um, who was it? At one of the Game Awards, uh, Greg Miller, if you know who he is, he gave a game over uh, Greggy. Yes, he, uh, which actually inspired uh, my name, if it wasn't obvious. Oh. And uh, he oh. was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he was actually um, the very first guest when I first started my channel that I had, which I have no idea why he agreed to it because I was so small at the time. But anyways, uh, he awesome. he won. Um, like I forgot what award it was, like most popular oh. gamer or something, and he gave a speech similar yeah. to what you just said, where he mentioned that he was playing, I believe it was like Tomb Raider, and then uh, after he finished the game, everyone just turns it off. But he enjoyed the game so much that he let the credits roll, and he was like looking through the credits, and it suddenly hit him that it's not just the voice actors or the people who are usually put as the face of the game. It's all of these people who work behind the scenes that no one ever hears from or knows about, that they're the ones who are equally as responsible for making the game as great as it is. Because even if the game has fantastic voice acting, if it's full of glitches and bugs or a certain level is just really crappy, then no one is going to care that it had really good voice acting because they won't want to finish the game if it's just not fun. So he gave yeah. a speech along those lines, which matched up with uh, kind of like what you were saying. So that was interesting. Um, but my final question uh, before Ilya takes over is uh, your past highlights uh, before Breath of the Wild. Uh, what are some of the things that you were most proud of that you've done? Um, so I right now, because that question would probably change or that answer would change day to day. But I right now I'm in the middle of recording a second album. And to me, doing original creative work is a really important part of my experience as an artist. And it keeps me grounded and it keeps me having a real voice that I can rely on somehow and it enhances my other work. So right now I would say just recording music, however it turns out, because I'm obviously very hard on it when it, <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I'm horrible. Why did I do this? You guys go through that too, um, which is very normal. <laughs> But um, yeah, I would say that. And I would say as far as video game roles go, I'd say the first big exciting thing that I did for video games early on when you're just, you've not landed any big roles before. The first one that I landed that changed my idea that of how I could be a video game voice actor was weirdly <laughs> uh, Beowulf from, yeah, like I, I ended up having to do a voice match for Angelina Jolie and they're like, we need a sort of like weird, like Slavic accent. That's kind of, it doesn't have to be a, <laughs> they said a great Slavic accent, <laughs> but like something vaguely, you know, Eastern European or something like that. And they were looking for the grains in the voice. And I went in and somehow landed that audition after making a really nice demo that I'd been working really hard on. And it actually led to a role. And that was so exciting. I just didn't even know what to do with myself. Um, and then I ended up going back to theater school after that in London, um, which was another highlight. But uh, that was my first, I was like, I could be a video game voice actor and I'm riveted by this work. It's so exciting. And, you know, I was like, wow, you can get paid for this and it's a thing. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ilya, Daniel, do either of you have any questions? Well, I feel like before we go into um, a like a little bit further here. A lot of questions we've gotten some, from some fans. So obviously I wanna go over those with you guys, but um, before I do, just because of the nature of most of the fan submitted questions, I do have to ask like, um, you know, after working on this game, did you ever actually go through, give your own playthrough of it? Cause I know a lot of times people will work mm -hmm. on a game like that, but they just simply don't have the time to actually sit down and go through it as a gamer as well, or on that side of things. So mm -hmm. is that something you actually went and did and if so, was that weird for you to hear your own voice? Um, yes. Yeah, so this was an interesting thing that happened to me this last year. I was very excited about the idea of playing the game. Um, I, I probably got about all, when all is said and done, about 30 hours of the game under my belt. 
Um, but what ended up like, I thought I was going to beat the game. I was like, I'm going to go through this game. It's going to be so much fun. But <laughs> when the game came out, I, got, I kind of got inundated with questions, criticisms, uh, travel, um, conventions, a new agent, like things. There were so many things around the game that I suddenly had to contend to. Um, and I was just sort of figuring that all out, that it was quite exhausting. And to go into the game and play around was like, first of all, I, I very rarely have time to, to do stuff like that for too long because I am trying to be a creative artist on the side and it does take directly away from the time allotted to be a creative artist. Um, for some people, they, that's like a, uh, what would you say, a, a decompressor. For some people, they go into games and they can decompress and clear their minds doing that. For me, it feels like it's more of an energy sucker, like I'm using creativity to do it. So I do feel the drain in other places. So I just, for a lot of different reasons, I was, I couldn't play the game. Like it, it actually became hard for me to pick it up. And it was a little weird for me to hear the voice on the game as well as everywhere else. <laughs> and I was like, I just need to take breaks from it. Cause uh, it was a lot of weirdly more pressure after the game came out, I think, than, yeah. than yeah. when I was recording it. That makes sense. I was just thinking that one of our previous guests, um, his name is Orion Powell. He's from the mm -hmm. band um, Here Lies, and he's a big Zelda fan as well. But then he, because he's in a band and he's doing tours and recordings and stuff like that, um, he just hasn't had the time to really sit down and get into these games and stuff, right? So <laughs> I was thinking, you know, that probably carries forward when it comes to a lot of creative things. Because even myself, when we start doing video production and stuff, I don't have as much time as maybe I would like to sit down and play these um, games. Um, one thing as well, notice just from my own experience doing uh, voice work or acting and stuff, um, a lot of the times, especially because myself and I know Ilya as well, uh, we both have theater backgrounds. And so, yeah, which is awesome. <laughs> um, oftentimes in theater, you have to like, um, or you, even voice work, you, you kind of can bounce off of someone that you're acting opposite of, right? Um, but in the case of Link, he's a silent protagonist. So in a lot of these cutscenes and conversations, it's a very one-sided conversation with Zelda um, and Link just kind of, you know, saying nothing, right? So was that uh, something that was kind of an obstacle when recording that you didn't have someone to play mm -hmm. off of that way? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and, a, and one I think that changes with each of the games that I've experienced. I don't know about you, but that I feel like that's a that would be an adaptable question. So many games now don't have you really are often doing your lines into the ether. Um, most of them are like that. For Breath of the Wild, uh, the director was extremely generous. He's, he was one of those like uber supportive directors, and he would often like feed the line to me just before, and then we would. But the thing is, like, also you are you're doing dubbing work, so you have a line coming across and then you have to do, and you have to follow the lip flaps. So just to even try to do that technically, you have to keep the intention in your head about what you're responding to. And maybe <laughs> it was a little bit of challenge, but I'd say the bigger challenge is just technically doing the lip flaps that were created for a Japanese language, then translated to English so that the words and the rhythm of it had to actually be, they'd have they still had to match the Japanese lip flaps. That's tricky. That's some of the trickiest kind of dubbing work that you can do. Um, so, and then also just like keeping the right tone. And so they, they chose what ultimately they wanted, but we did a lot of different versions of how you would respond to, to different things. So, yeah. But yeah, that was definitely a thing. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um, that sounds like a, a very difficult thing to try and do. Yeah, it does. I, I, never, I didn't even think about the whole having to match up with the, you know, voice actors for all the other languages because Breath of the Wild is yeah. released in a slew of, and people, some people change the language over. I always just played in English because mm -hmm. I like to understand the game when I'm playing it, but it's, that's just my preference, yeah. of course. Yeah, um, you'll notice the lip flaps. Um, that's not always the case for anime. A lot of the times right. they build the lip flaps around uh, around the voice, but for this particular one, the mm -hmm. Japanese lip flaps were, were the ones that all the languages use. And so oh, wow. even if you get like a really great performance of something mm -hmm. and it doesn't totally match the lip flaps, you have to redo it. So that's tricky. <laughs> yeah. We, we oh, actually man. have about 60 people watching live right now and they're all saying like how much they enjoyed it 
and how amazing oh, it was. You. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. To the 60 people watching, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's me again, Elia Rose. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And you know what? If you're a fan of videos like this, you should totally subscribe and give this video a like and comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can receive many rewards such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more.